I had people in my life that when we had to take a loan out to open up our first space in 2018, which was, you know, 2,500 square feet for kitchen and gym, because I had both things going on. I tried to find people to tell me not to do it. If being perfectly honest, right? Like I was scared. Welcome to the Zero Quit Podcast, where we bring you inside the minds of elite athletes, business owners, and other guests. I'm your host, Brock Covington, and through these conversations, you'll hear practical advice and effective strategies for building a more resilient mind. If you enjoy listening, be sure to subscribe to the show and share it with a friend. What's going on, guys? Welcome to today's show. Today, we're having on Mr. Matthew Williams, who is the founder and owner of FroPro, as well as as the host of the Wake Up the Sun podcast. Um, and so I feel like that's a great starting point is what is FroPro? <laughs> what is it all about? Well, um, uh, initially, uh, it was just, uh, basically something I created in my, in my kitchen to kind of bike around South Florida. So it's a peanut butter snack bar. So it's organic peanut butter, plant-based protein, gluten-free oats, honey, and cinnamon. That's what it kind of got to originally. It was made with a couple different other things that I had in my pantry, mm-hmm. um, and made it because it was one of those things that you know, uh, different time in my life and kind of had to figure out some, some things to get around town on a bike and yeah, you know, South Florida is not really conducive to buses or trains or anything like that to, to get around. And it's, uh, yeah, it was just an easy kind of easy way for me to, you know, throw some snacks in my bag and, and, and prepare for my day that, you know, food wouldn't spoil or go bad or yeah. melt or, you know, South Florida sun, rain, sun, all that craziness. So yeah, it's organic peanut butter snack bar and, and started with, uh, you know, making it for myself and shared it with some of my personal training clients and some of my friends that uh, kind of, you know, uh, at first I felt safe around because like, <laughs> I didn't want anybody to be like, man, this sucks. Sucks, yeah. Um, but, yeah, through a lot of really awesome people. and uh, So you've always been – have you always kind of baked different things? Or was this kind of like just <laughs> no. off, a, off a whim? You just thought, I'll make up my own snack bar. Yeah, no, it was one of those things. Um, I, I'm not really like a, a chef or anything yeah. like that. Like, you know, I can make some fun things that I know how to make and like grill and all that good stuff. But, yeah, it just was one of those things that I threw some stuff together – and you know it's stuck I, it, it's yeah literally it just stuck and i there's a lot of people involved along the way that were like hey try this or do this and mm-hmm. this may make the product better and um i listen to those people because uh, you know it's people's responses to it um but yeah i feel like you know now yeah it's come it's, it's crazy to where it's grown to and and you know what what you know only feels now my wife and i always talk about yeah you know, chelsea and i always talk about how we just feel like we're getting started and we've yeah. been doing this, you know, I started this back in 2011 and you know, it's crazy. It's like been 11, well, officially a business in 2013. So we celebrate our, that's what I was going to ask. So when, when did you really go, Oh, like people really like this and we can actually make this a business <laughs> and how like the name come to be? Yeah, no. So that was the thing. I, I, I shared it with one of my, my, my clients, and, um, you know, I was training, you know, I was an elementary school teacher mm-hmm. and, you know, had some contacts with like, you know, sports teams and kids and, you know, mentoring and tutoring and, yeah. and coaching and things like that. And one of the, um, you know, young ladies I was, I was coaching, was like, Hey, what are you eating? And I was like, Hey, uh, it's just a thing I make for myself. And knowing like how, you know, again, allergies and how parents really try to, mm-hmm. you know, just watch out. Uh, and I said, yeah, ask your mom. I, I don't know if you have allergies or not. And she tried it. And, and essentially the woman was like, my kid does is this healthy and i said yeah she's like my kid doesn't eat anything healthy and i said well this is relatively you know, well that's good the thing for her. i liked about it because we brought him into um our gym for the past you know six or eight months i feel like and the thing i liked about them is a lot of bars you know they claim healthy and this and that and you know i'm sure they're fine right. but your bar is kind of good for everyone because it is no <laughs> soy no dairy right. no gluten no, no anything basically just just good healthy ingredients yeah and so it, it is very universal i feel like and and uh just a good option for everyone, you know. And that's kind of, you know, what we've had people that come along and like, who is this bar for? Is this for lifters, power yeah. lifters? Is this for endurance athletes? I said, it's honestly for anybody, really, that's looking for a healthy alternative. Uh, it's a snack. Our whole thing is relaxed. It's an effing snack. And, and it, we want it. It's like, again, mm-hmm. if you have it, it's, you know, the highest calorically dense one is 220 calories and mm-hmm. down to 180. So it's like you're not going to really ruin you know if you're really dialed into nutrition or diet and i respect that you're not going to really throw anything off um it's not oversized it's it's literally just a snack well i was gonna say my first instinct because 
you know, I'd seen your page for a while, seen the brand, things like that. And I was like, how big is this bar? Because you know, they come in all kinds of different sizes, right. right? And so when I saw yours, I was trying to like almost get a comparison between different, you know, someone's hand or this or sure. that. And so when we got them in the gym, you know, I got it. My first instinct was it's a little bit smaller than I expected. And I wasn't expecting it to fill me up. I was like, I don't know how we're going to sell these that well if, you know, let's say the other bar we're using is a little bit bigger and it's the same price. But I'll tell you, you know, at first you think, oh, I'll just finish it in like two bites, three bites. But you kind of take these smaller bites and they, one, obviously it's, it's very tasty from Appreciate various that, different flavors. But also <laughs> it fills you up more than you expect. Like right. it's truly not just, you know, you mentioned it's fairly low calorie, which is nice too. But it's also going to be enough that a lot of times I've been like working at the gym, starving. And I'm like, shoot, I still need to work out. Right. I'll grab a Fro Pro and eat right. that, and that's enough to kind of fuel me through the workout. So it, it is perfect on the go and convenient. I appreciate that. Yeah, and that was the thing. It's like we definitely always say it's like, you know, we're biased, obviously, because yeah. we created it. But, like, we we do think it's one of the best-tasting bars that's out there. There's no cardboard aftertaste. You know, mm-hmm. we do everything. You know, we have our own kitchen. We don't send it out to Copac. And I know, you know, when you grow with something, a lot of the times you can lose that kind of – Quality, quality assurance yeah. of what you're getting in a product, and you know what fills you up is like you know the different fruit and veggie blends that are in the protein, uh-huh. and, and how we kind of put everything in there to make it a great tasting bar. Where it's like again, it's just a snack. Some people say, hey, this is my morning, you know, coffee and fro pro, or yeah. <laughs> midday. It's like I haven't worked out, I need something, and it goes yeah. back to like the concept of like you know people that are training, and it's like if they train in the morning, it's like I'm gonna have a scoop of peanut butter, maybe a banana mm-hmm. or an apple, and it's like if you have something that offers you instead of eating three different things you have something that offers you a great carb a great protein and delicious taste it kind of is like oh it checks everything off and i'm not like weighed down i don't feel lethargic i don't feel like my my body's not going into like really like breakdown mode catabolic state right you know in in terms of eating one now you eat a bunch that's a different story (laughs) that's my problem so (laughs) what was it like transitioning from okay i bake these in my own kitchen to actually finding and pursuing a manufacturer. What was that experience like? What mistakes did you make? Or what were the challenges that came up with that? Yeah, I think I was doing everything myself at the time and I was making a mess of the kitchen. And and again, like we're not big like chefs in our house and like we do what we like and you know, everything else. Like we like to support the local restaurants as as, as we say, but yeah, I I just, uh, I had a buddy um, that I knew. He had a kitchen space, a commercial kitchen space. And I said, you know, what does it look like for me to rent this? You know, what do I need? Because down in Florida, you can also, if you did stuff at home and mm-hmm. like all oh, there's green markets because South Florida is nice 365, it's, you can have a, it's called the Cottage Act where you can actually say, hey, this product is made in my home and you can put it, but you have to label it. And certain people like appreciate it and other people mm-hmm. like, I don't want something made out of somebody's yeah. home. So I said, you yeah. know, well, let me see what this looks like. And, and, and he was pretty, um, he was pretty good about the initial space and the rent. And like, I had weird times and like, I had to go in when he wasn't there or his, yeah. his, his, so uh, weird kind of restrictions. Around. Yeah. His chefs weren't there. Cause yeah. he, he did a couple different things and you know, it was a really good learning experience. I did everything myself. And like, I always say it's, you know, I didn't know anything about the food business. You know, I was a teacher, I was a coach and I used to grind my own oats. Cause like, I didn't know that you could buy bags, you know, Up like ground, I used to go hunt down peanut butter because I didn't know that you could, or, you know, like I had no clue about a lot of these things. Yeah. So I learned a lot by talking to people. And as I was growing, so, you know, I asked, would ask people in the restaurant business or the food service mm-hmm. business. Yeah. It's like so tiring. And they're like, dude, why are you doing that? You can literally call <laughs> XYZ, you know, ABC, yeah. all these different depots or yeah. places. And I said, yeah, it's all about the ingredients. So I want to make sure it's good. And they're like, yeah, they do that. And, uh, I, I kind of learned along the way. It's like, you know, as you grow with something and then, you know, you want to uh, you want to scale it and everyone's mm-hmm. like how do you scale this and you know a lot of people you know s- you have to go to a co-pack on this yeah. and you have to do you know all these things and I, and i think you know you have to go and do what's right for you and you know if you fail or you, you know like some of the sta- mistakes we made is like you know i had some people that it didn't line up for them it wasn't for them and yeah. you know I, I i believe in paying people well and you know, just like some mistakes were made. And then I found the right guy, like our head chef now, he's, he's incredible. He's been with me for eight years and he started cause he's a hustle. Like he hustles, mm-hmm. he works his ass off 
And so they're still baked basically in a commercial kitchen? Or? Yeah, so everything is made in now now in our space that we own ourselves. You okay. know, uh, right, we went yeah. from renting space in West Boca to went renting space in Boynton. And just had some things that were unfortunate, like business learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people say one thing, they do another. Yeah. And we had a couple of those, which really affected kind of like our trust in certain things. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I think with anything, you move forward and you, you kind of learn from those mistakes and you move to doing something new. And then if that ever comes up again, you don't really... <clears throat> You don't really have to experience it again. I mean, yeah. you can make the same mistakes over, but like, you know, one of my mentors says, if you keep making those mistakes, it's a choice. And if you're going to choose to, to make mistakes on purpose, it's, you know, you're not doing the right thing. And I think that's where a lot of people kind of get stuck. You talked about kind of scaling up and going to the next step because a friend of mine, you know, with his supplement business, when he started, he was actually, you know, him and his brother, they were buying the bulk ingredients. They were putting it in tubs, shaking it manually, you know, versus actually going to a facility that has a giant machine that's going to tumble Mixing, it and yeah. mix it all up. But there's, there's something to appreciate from those natural, authentic stories like yours to where yeah. it started in-house, it grew authentically. And that's how you know you have a valuable product when there's no hyper flash behind it and people are still asking you about it and they yeah. want it. And that scaling point is the tough point because that's where you have to really take risk and really <laughs> take chances and put funds oh. up because a lot of people, the exciting part is telling people about your business. It's starting the Instagram. It's, it's finding the logo, doing the T-shirts, whatever. It's that initial phase where you can be really fun, creative. There's not a lot of risk involved. And things are pretty small. But it's those next steps where you actually go to doing it full time or you actually step up in that bigger facility, you take out a loan or you make those bigger decisions where things get scary, that get a little bit hairier. But that's where, you know, that, that's what separates the, you know, f uh, fly out of the kitchen or the, the smaller brands that kind of die out versus right. the ones that are there to be sustained and that end up doing bigger things like you guys are doing. Well, I think that, you know, and I, I appreciate that, you know, I, I think there is some lost art to it because like there's a lot of people that think, you know, failure. Um, and I had to learn this, you know, it's like I don't want to fail like failing's bad. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like a lot of the entrepreneurs I talk to on my show or people that have started things from mm -hmm. scratch or bought into something and taken it over, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be a lot of failure and it's not a bad thing. And it's one of those things where, you know, we one of our biggest failures ended up be one ended up being one of our greatest successes mm -hmm. right one of the flavors tropical dream mm -hmm. it was a giant mistake and it's you know i looked at it i was like oh man you know like it was on me and i said how do we correct this because it was a big financial loss so what was the mistake just like the flavor in general or the no it was like things got like the powders and, and certain things got mixed the wrong way. So the original it, yeah, batch came out weird? The original batch and it came out. And to me, I was like, wow, this is really tasty. And Whole Foods at the time when they were opening, they always wanted one. We had like an almond butter line for a period of time. Yeah. It may come back, but like, you know, we really want to focus. We're a peanut butter snack bar company. Mm -hmm. And they always wanted one of the almond butters, but almond butter was so stinking expensive. And it was yeah. like, we can't, like we'd be losing money. Margins, yeah. So one of the flavor it was just funny it cross-pollinated two different flavors we brought it to an initial meeting with them like hey what do you think about mm -hmm. this flavor for your grand opening of your delray beach store and they're like this tastes like the almond one but different because it has this other stuff from your other bar and i yeah. said so wait do you like it and they're like yeah i said well we don't have a name for it yet so essentially you guys are going to be naming this yeah for your store and it, they, you know, they wanted something pineapple-y, Delray Beach, like, you know, mm -hmm. like that that kind of like kind of light beach vibe. Beach yeah. vibe. Yeah. And we just came on Tropical Dream. And it, it, I was like, wow. And like initially I said, this is a great mistake. Or initially mm -hmm. I was like, man, this is, you know, I, I can't do anything about it. It's on me. It's like yeah. I'm going to eat this and we're going to figure it out. And we ended up taking the bars that were made. And again, it was a small batch, you know, a couple thousand bars. Mm -hmm. But like. We sold them in bags to people that are like our local fans yeah. and like tried something Support new. Anything, yeah. And then we figured out packaging and, and, and what the what the recipe was and how we did how we you know were able to replicate it. And it, it ended up being a success. Now that was a great story. The other, you know, there's some other like, you know, like I said, you invest time, you invest money um, in certain people and it doesn't necessarily work out the way you want it to. Or, you know, like you have again, it comes down to expectations, awareness of how you feel, perception mm -hmm. of it, and it's like 
you know, I want things to go this way and then they don't, how do I respond? If it's a yeah. failure, cool. What do I need to learn from this? How do I never do this again? Because it's painful. Um, and, and I think that's, again, it comes back to what you said, like taking that risk. I had people in my life that when we had to take a loan out to open up our first space in 2018, mm -hmm which was, you know, 2,500 square feet for kitchen and gym. Yeah. Because I had both things going on. I tried to find people to tell me not to do it. Mm -hmm. If being perfectly honest, yeah. right? Like I was scared mm -hmm. and one or two people, they were like, dude, like I, I can't believe you haven't done this yet. Yeah. And I said, what do you mean? They're like, like, what are you waiting for? And I was like, I, I've never done this. They're like, mm -hmm. right. It's uncharted territory. It's scary. Mm -hmm. You're putting out a lot of money. But you already have clients. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to, you know what you're doing for the bars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had some really good people. Like one of my best buddies uh, who does, you know, general contracting was like, I got you. And, and again, it was putting up walls and down floor and a drop ceiling and like mm -hmm. no major changes. And he built a kitchen in less than a, less than three weeks. Some steps like that, there is no putting your toes in. You just dive in and you, have you, to. you don't, right? Yeah. And you have to be willing to take those risks and be willing to have those failures because like you said you kind of want to fail as much as you can early you know before there's bigger money at stake because then you can learn from those lessons 100 percent. as long as you don't repeat them yeah they're valuable lessons i mean we one of the biggest one of the most valuable lessons is you know we live in florida yeah there is a period of time where there are a ton of hurricanes and you know one of those we lost power we didn't know how to do what we were doing and it was still in the earlier stage mm -hmm. but we lost thousands of dollars worth of product because yeah. You know, we don't necessarily need to be refrigerated, but I wasn't thinking in that way where it's like, oh, they'll be fine. And they're ruined. Everything was ruined mm -hmm. and we had to start over. Mm -hmm. Lesson learned. Yeah. Right? And, you know, those those are the things that I think, you know, I'm not a technical guy and we just, you know, it's like we looked at Copac and we looked at a lot of different mm -hmm. things. And I just said, I'm not comfortable. You know, other companies that have since sold and, you know, they've started the same way we did. That You know, there's a couple that stayed true to their mm -hmm employees and the, the people involved and i'm not a technical guy so we got this machine now i remember since this pro pro started i was making everything wrapping everything doing yeah. everything and since then a lot has changed right my wife has stepped in a role she is the ceo she mm -hmm. it's a women-owned business she kicks ass on a regular basis and does all the things that i'm not really strong at mm -hmm. and we have someone that just started you know working with her covid lost her job she came on part-time and i was like i want to be here i know I, I i see where you're going and those are the things that are great but to come to the technical piece it's like in your business, you should know every single in and out, right? You're, as mm -hmm. a gym owner, yep. of course, you're going to hire a manager maybe mm -hmm. eventually that like believes, again, no one's going to give a shit as much as you do about your business. Yeah. But if you find somebody, like it was you and your wife, but if you find someone that loves it, they're a member, they're diehard, they're clean the gym mm -hmm. at the end, you know, those are those, those are those great people. But you have to know every little piece about your business. Yeah. And the new machine, guess what? If something goes wrong, I have to know. Have to know I have to be... Yeah the one that knows how to fix it because I can't, you know, I can fly somebody in to fix it, but I need to know how to do these things. Yeah. And like I had to learn on every machine since. So like when we got the new one, why did I think it was going to work perfectly? Yeah. It didn't. And I had to literally take pieces apart, which is not my forte. <laughs> and I was just Come handy, man. getting yeah. very frustrated. But I said, I have to learn how to do this yeah. because when it happens, I can fix it. And then eventually I can pass that along to, the director of operations yeah. who was watching the same on the same or watching everything I was doing. So you got to learn everything about your business. Yeah. Ins and outs. Yeah. There's a lot of things you have to bootstrap, you know, from the jump and you need to be a bit of a jack of all trades. You may not be a master of everything, but there's initial periods where, you know, you don't have excess funds to hire someone to do your advertisements, to do nope. your graphics, to do your sales, to do all these different things. So you do have to have that capacity and willingness to learn these different skills. And then you, you know, you're able to be more well-rounded because you made a good point. If something goes wrong, no matter if that's not, let's say the thing you focus on today, the people, the employees that you hire, they're still going to look to you, you know, as, as for leadership and things like that. But you touched on a good point that I think is very hard for, we didn't have to go through this process, but a lot of small businesses do is taking that chance and really delegating to your employees and trusting them that they're going to carry out the same mantra, the same vibe, the same standards that you put forth. Because I think all business owners have really high standards, what they do. I'm sure when, you know, when you're handing off how to bake something, you're trusting that the chef that you have now is going to bake them to the standards that you have. And it's hard to 
idealize that somebody's going to care as much as you do, which is right. what you said earlier. Correct. But it, it's tough to just let that go. What is what was that process like hiring the first initial people and even having your wife come on and handle a lot of it sounds like the management of things. Yeah, you know, um, uh, my my head chef, he's he's incredible. Um, he is I I've, I've not really met too many people like him. He has a goal in mind. He wants to be done working at a certain age. And he does, he, he, he's out there. He does a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but he's been with me for a while, and he knows the value. He sees where we're going. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that I think is important to, to, to really get people, you know, it's like, you know, if they already believe in you, it's like, here's where we're going. You know, this is, this is our end goal for, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's a gym or a snack bar, whatever business you're in. And just communication. I think communication is the yeah. Most important thing in a business. 100%. At the end of the day, everything is going to fall on me because that's the way it should be. But mm -hmm. delegation, it can be tough. I know, you know, my wife struggled with that because it's like you want to make sure it's done right. So if it's done wrong, you don't mm -hmm. have to redo it. But that's part of the deal. It's tough with the spouse, too, because I definitely get that because there's a, there's a fine line, I'm sure, that you get of, you know, you, you, you can't be too critical because then it feels like, you know, at least on their end, you know, th there's... You can't separate personal and business, right? There are some, some things that overlap. So if you have a discussion with them or an argument or criticism or you believe something should be done one way and they think it should be done another, that doesn't just disappear or you can't just treat them like every other employee in a sense. You know what I mean? At least and, that's what I uh, No, and that's, I completely agree. We had a situation last week. I was outvoted two to one. Yeah. And I said, I'm allowed to disagree with you guys, <laughs> but I understand why you made that decision. Yeah. And we're good. Let's keep it moving. Yeah, and that's, that's the right attitude to have, yeah. And, uh, you know, like... I, I don't try to control a lot of things anymore, you know. I think that's the biggest mistake is micromanaging everything. Uh, yeah. It's exhausting. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and that's, again, same thing. Like, I work with my wife. I, you know, mm -hmm. like, she very much came on in 2016. I used to write things in a notebook with pencil. Mm -hmm. And she's like, uh, you know, she came from listen, running dummy. someone's. <laughs> yeah, she's like, listen up, dummy. Yeah. Like, this is not how we're going to do this. And she streamlined a lot of processes that mm -hmm. I wasn't really strong in. Yeah. Um, and like I handle the gym side, the kitchen side and everything that we do, everything, every time we change something like we just, re, you know, we've been in the kitchen now for four years. We just revamped the entire thing, completely redid everything in there because again, when we're starting with a new machine and, you know, eventually is to have a bar making machine, you know, everything we do is by mm -hmm. hand. And now we're now, thankfully the machine part of pa packaging the bar is not, it's going to be in machine. It's going to allow us to accelerate our growth and our production and scale a little bit more and start to get our product out there a little bit more into certain places that, you know, we've been wanting to get out. The world's opening up. There's a yeah. lot of things at play here. And, you know, you don't get many chances, right? You know, we were told with the way you know, we loved our packaging, we loved everything. And we were told, hey, great product, love the taste. I think it's awesome. We have no place to put you because... You know, we don't have this space in the refrigerated. So what do you, I was like, so what do we need to do? Shrink your, pa shrink, you know, bar mm -hmm. stays the same size, shrink your packaging, shrink your box size. We can fit more product on there. I was mm -hmm. like, done, we'll do it. Took us months. Mm -hmm. We're about to revamp that whole thing. And, and that's going to come out uh, next, literally next week. The new, pa the new packages come out, bringing back an old school flavor. One of your favorites, yeah. I guess, key lime that, uh, you know, there's a lot of exciting things happening and I, and, and, and it's scary, Yeah. but we've been doing it to a point now for long enough to where we kind of know what to expect yeah and again not saying everything's going to go smoothly but you know we know what to expect we know what we plan to do how we plan to do it and we have you know like any business right it's like you just exited your business and it's mm -hmm. you're doing something you know you have other things that you're interested yeah. in but you know what's the exit everybody but hey what's the exit strategy for fro pro i was like i really love what i do you know it if I were to be able to be acquired or bought out eventually, great. But like, I love genuine. I genuinely love showing up to work every day. I've had jobs in the past where I like dreaded yeah. Monday. Yeah, I get and it. And like, that had a lot to do with like me not living my best life, you know, up, mm. you know, until I got sober. But like, there was just a lot of things. I'm like, man, this. Oh, I don't want to do this. And there are days like that, but they're very few and far between and it usually has nothing to do with work it has nothing to do with anything it's just me like having a pity party yeah so i think you know the the thought process for again any business owner i mean you're a business owner mm -hmm. and, and like i think you need to be able to be i think you need to be able to communicate yeah i think you need to be able to take a look at yourself and hear positive or negative feedback mm -hmm. coming from either those involved 
or someone from the outside that's like, hey, like, you're kind of being a dick. Yeah. And, like, there's a reason why things aren't going well. Mm -hmm. Um, And and being able to respond to that and adjust, right? Yeah. And I think you mentioned it, too, is just know what you're good at and know know where you can improve and know where you can hire someone else who's going to be better at doing that for your business. You know, it takes a lot of maturity and taking away and suppressing your ego to actually, you know, do what's best for the business overall. Yeah, and uh, and I think yeah, most most people would tell you it's like you know there's only a limited amount of time in a day, and if there are people that can facilitate something in your life or make it easier or provide a service, that allows you to do other things that you either a are for your business or for life, hire them. Mm-hmm. You know, like watch how your life changes. You have more free time. Like we joke a lot about one of my, well, actually a couple of my restaurant buddies. They're like, oh, it must be nice. And I'm like, it is fucking nice. Mm-hmm. I've worked really hard, and so have you. Like, you want to go on a vacation with your yeah. son, and I want to go golf or play volleyball or pickleball, or you want to go, like, on vacation? Like, you deserve that. Do it. Like, yeah. it is nice because when you put that work in and you bust your ass and you put everything out, like, I know, like, I wouldn't be able to enjoy myself. Like, I'm out here, right? We're, we're in Denver, Colorado. Mm-hmm. You drove in. It's, I'm so grateful that you did so we can yeah. connect in person and, like, grateful that you gave our bar a chance. But, like, I'm, I'm here for 48 hours. Mm-hmm. And it was like, do I, should I be doing this? Is this something that's, like, super important? Of course it is. Mm-hmm. Like, there's an event on Saturday. I have friends out here. We got to work out today. I got to meet a new gym owner. I got to meet people so involved in community mm-hmm. that, like, whether I sell Fropro bars or not, like, the connection between people and like multiple communities is everything to me. Like yeah. my dad was big into that. Like he said, he's like, you know, like I have two older brothers. He's like, you guys, you know, spread out across the country and like have different pods where you can go visit different yeah. communities. And I think, I, I know it sounds like really hokey or really like lame, but I think like, that's how like everything gets better in this country Yeah, is like meeting people like we met today. Like you mm-hmm. and I didn't, we met in the parking lot mm-hmm. officially in person. Yeah, officially in the parking lot. And then we walked lot into a gym that was met so five to ten other people we've never met before. That yeah. were great energy. That were happy that we were there. Like mm-hmm. it was one of the better better mornings that I think you know I think a lot of people don't experience. You know, like the the grind of the nine to five. That's cool. Yeah. If that's what you want. Well, that's something I wrote down was, I was going to ask you, and I wrote down must be nice at you too because I was listening to a podcast <laughs> from you that you were talking about, yeah. was when you're owning a business, especially early on, you're trading a nine to five for five to nine. You know, you're basically working even more hours. 100%. There's no PTO. There's no insurance kind of guaranteed. There's a lot of comforts that come with a, a job, whether it's corporate or not, that, you know, there's nothing negative about it. Obviously, people need to work those jobs and there's pride you can have in those jobs, but there's a risk that people need to acknowledge that people like us take that, you know, when you see us having fun, you, you know, you guys look like you have the best time where you work and you said you love going in every day. You took the chance and put in the work to create that environment. Right. It and, didn't just exist. And that was, and that was said to me from a mentor of mine where I was getting my life together and I saw all these people literally having coffee, like, you know, kind of in a place like where we are now. And I just said, I was like, man, like, why don't we do that? And he goes, listen, man, he goes, I got four kids. I got a mortgage. I got a job. I got a dog. I got a lot going on. He's like, you want that? Go build it. Mm -hmm. He goes, I'm here for you. And like, I own my time is limited because I built something else. But if that's what you want, you need to go build it. However you do it. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, a lot of, I think a lot too. It's like when people are like, oh, you have this robo thing. I said, yeah, I still train people. Mm -hmm. I train people because I genuinely love it and it pays me well Mm -hmm. because I'm still paying for my life and like the nice things. It's some people I think, great, go all in, burn the bridges, go for it. Yeah. But sometimes it's like, you know, when I was building FroPro, I realized that people were worried, like, you know, how are you going to be able to do this and grow this? And I said, well, my wife's running, running Mm -hmm. the show. You know, we have, and this, yeah. We have a director of operations mm-hmm. who's running the show. Part of the whole experience is the gym. Yeah. And working with people, and it's a community. Well, that's and, that's another thing I wanted to talk about was Fro Pro, and I think you have it written. I don't know if it's like the, the guaranteed slogan, but more than a bar, right? Yeah. And that's 
something that also stood out to me and something that will jump out, I think, off the page immediately if you go to your Instagram, is that it is more than just a bar. Mm. And I think there's a million different bars, right, and big brands out there that you'll see in the store, Cliff Bar, RX Bar, all these different Congrats things. Congrats to them, right? by the way, for selling for $3.1 billion. Yeah, but what separates you guys, and I think you know, maybe won't exponate the, uh, the growth of the company, but like you said, sticking true to your values yeah. is being about a community, having fun. So when I think of Fro Pro, I'm not just thinking of the snack. I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking of fun, that. good vibes, uh, fitness overall. I'm thinking of a good time. Living your best life. Living your best life. And, good and, and, that, and that's true. And you know, it's funny. Like you said, Cliff Bar, and I, and I have to say, like that guy, blood, sweat, and tears for 30 plus years, turned down offers left and right. Almost lost the company several times. But the biggest thing was he created a community and a value system. Mm -hmm. And the people that believed in him were like, I don't know of any other company that paid out their employees like he did. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, am I going to grow that big? I don't know. Is it possible? Sure. Took that guy 30 years. I literally just, you know, Chelsea and I say, like, we literally just feel like we're getting started. Started, yeah. You know, because now we're starting to get out and, like, we're in 15 different states and we're, you know, how do you do that? Like, I think it's important to go to those places, look people, like, after this, I'm going to a store that's giving us a chance to meet the director and say, thank you. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm Matt. You've been communicating with my wife. I'm Matt. Like, thank you for the opportunity. You know, like, before we even finish that, you know, that workout today, mm-hmm. hey guys, shipping department, send out a couple boxes yeah. to the tattoo guy to being good re- to good people, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I, in my mind, I Pay walked in there, they welcomed me in, I signed a waiver, and like yeah. they opened it up like I was like part of their gym. Yeah, you same, you had the same experience. Same experience yeah. And then we cold plunged, and then we're talking about life and getting to know people, and I think that that connection is everything, and yeah. I think that falls short. Um, I think that's, I think more people are starting to experience that. And there's like a great shift in the workplace that like, again, I'm not saying that it's just, you're reading about it. You're seeing about it. Like people don't want to be in in an office. It ties, it ties to our experience today. And it also ties to treating your employees well is there's almost, it's rare to find somebody or some people that are going to do the right thing or do something good for you without expecting something immediate in return. Right. Because a lot of times the company's waiting for you to put up certain numbers before they're going to give you any kind of raise or bonus. Right. But if you take care of your people, right, or, you know, when people come into your gym and you're giving them the best experience, you're treating them like family from the jump, I'm guaranteed to recommend people, hey, go to V23 Athletics, go to that gym, go talk to Ruthie and people like that because I've had such a good experience. And that, that you know, that word, word of mouth, mouth travels. The yeah. be- it is the best form of advertising. Um, I was reading one book. It's called Contagious, and it's all yeah. about that. It's all about the word of mouth. How do you, you know, how, like how certain brands blew up from like 70s, 80s to like mm-hmm. restaurants that like, you know, you put something out that, you know, that their big thing was like it was like the hundred dollar cheesesteak. Yeah. It had like, you know, the craziest ingredients in it. But guess what? People want to go and like see mm-hmm. experience. What's this all about? Like I did yeah. it in we went out to eat a two pound donut. Like someone said, you got to go try this. We went. And we did it, and it was Mm -hmm. incredible. Like, I'll never forget that experience. Like, with my buddies, we drove back from California to Florida to bring back a dog. And uh, How did your stomach feel after you? Bro, it was brutal. (laughs) Uh, That that experience, like, you know, like, I can put away some food, but, like, they definitely made that a little bit bigger because I weighed it. I weighed it, and I said, guys, like, I can eat pretty fast, but, like, the goal is to eat the two pounds of donut. Just get it done. Under a certain amount of time. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I was sweating. Like, I was like, I, yeah. I, I can't do this. But <laughs> they, they have a thing. Yeah. And they have a community. They have a joy of living. A jo- what do they call it? Joie de vivre, right? That's such a weird word, but <laughs> French. But uh, it's like that thing. It's like I was seeking that for so long and thought I had it in certain times, but, like, I was killing myself trying to please people you Mm -hmm. know drink and party like other people until like i was left alone by myself like Mm -hmm. slowly dying from something at once gave me pleasure and it's like why am i doing that yeah you know like i'm getting older it's like certain things like that workout today was that was brutal brutal Brutal. but like i feel good (laughs) yeah i did it the best of my ability met some really kick-ass people and like i think that's the experience like you said it's like you i appreciate you saying this cuz like we try to share that it's like when you eat this bar we're more than just a bar you're supporting 
a family, a community. Um, and like, there's so many different things down in South Florida that like everybody, like we talked about it outside, you were there for mm-hmm. it. It's like people show up for each other. Yeah. And that's the most important thing. I don't want anything from you. Yeah. I If you show up for me, great. Like if you don't show up for me, mm-hmm. I'm still probably going to show up for you because I want to see you succeed. Mm-hmm. It's only the point in time when it's like, you know, it's like, you got to stop, and and this is a recent thing for me coming into this year. It's like you got to stop watering dead plants. You know, put a lot of energy out there to support and love on somebody, and like we do that without mm-hmm. asking for anything in return. But when it becomes expected, yeah, at some point, or it's yeah. like you're getting you're getting almost like grief from like having something else to do. It's like mm-hmm. let me tell you something, like. You know, there is a two way street to this and like, you know, you have to all you have to be very careful around that. You know, like people taking your energy and people are tough because, you know, one thing I've been reading in a, a, a book of mine recently was talking about, you know, obviously there's a lot of people that when you tell them good news, they put on, you know, a fake a fake smile. They can't stand it. But you can tell something's off. 100%. You know, and over time, you know, a, a, you can really kind of notice what the book kind of talked about, these micro expressions, you know, as you tell (laughs) someone good news, they kind of have a little grimace, you know, and there are a lot of people like that where you say, you know, you're trying to spread, you know, positivity and support amongst these things. But like you said, if it's just going, uh, if it's going nowhere, you know, and these, these plants are just dead, you know, you got to know, I guess, when to cut off and where to put your energy because there only is so much energy and time of day. Right. You know, there's, um, you know, there's a lot to be said. I mean, you could go into a lot of different things on this. Of course, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, there, everybody, I truly believe that everybody wants to see other people be successful, but just not too much. Not more than, yeah, that's a, that's a you know quote I, mean? I heard recently. Like, yeah. I want you to win, just not win over me or, you know, not right. be more successful than me. Right? And, and, and that's, I think that's, that's a really challenging thing. And, you know, it's. It's tough, and I, you know, it's like, how do you respond to that? And it's like, you just got to keep moving forward and doing you, right? And yeah. This is what's been working, and if something's not working, stop doing it. And if, you know, sometimes that comes at the cost of relationships, yeah, um, business, uh, familial, friend, um, yeah. And it's it's tough, and it, it really kind of sucks because, you know, like everybody's your biggest cheerleader when like everybody loves a comeback story. And this is like yeah. what somebody say, they love a comeback story. But then when they're like, that comeback story is consistent mm-hmm. and continues. And that, and that just comes down to my belief in a lot of things that like, you know, like, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, may not believe, you know, they don't have the faith. It's like, whether you have something, you believe in something greater than yourself, whether you, you know, whether it's the universe or if you're religious or mm-hmm. whatever it is, is believing like, I'm here for a true purpose, right? Cool. I have a delicious peanut butter snack bar. But, like, I was given a chance to help others to do something where I could spread that community, love, tolerance, acceptance, patience. Yeah. That, like, I didn't give myself for years or anybody else for that matter. Mm-hmm. So it's like, however long I'm here, as corny as that sounds, like, I'm going to do my best to provide that experience. I will fall short at times. I will not deliver a hundred percent but that's like the whole progress thing right is mm-hmm. i'm gonna do my best like you know like if i met you in the parking lot today and like was an asshole you'd be like why the hell did i drive yeah, here I drive this? up here for that yeah you know but like i knew we were gonna have a good time i was mm-hmm. looking forward to it like it was hard for me to go to sleep because i was like i was mm-hmm. seeing you and seeing my buddy and meeting new Excitement. folks yeah. yeah i was excited <laughs> i was excited about the joy of living and mm-hmm. i think you know, it's it's tough. You tell people, oh, like if you don't like your nine to five, go do something else. Oh, I can't. I have kids. Mm-hmm. I said, there's a lot of excuses out there, and like, I only say that because that's how I used to live. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't do this. Like, I have no money, or I can't do this. You know, and then it's like you figure out ways. It's like, are you going to give up your time now and bust your ass to a point where it's like, hey, man, if you sell your company, it's like, even successful people, they're like, cool. If I sell my company, I'm gonna do something else. Yeah. You know, sure. Mm-hmm. May play a little more golf, may travel a little mm-hmm. bit more, but I'm not going to sit on my ass. Yeah, like, you I still can't. Have, I still have something to contribute. Yeah. You don't turn off that kind of itch or that bug after you, you know, you sell a business or, or things like that. The people that I feel like 
that are motivated and driven, that isn't something you turn on or yeah. off, you know, whenever you reach a certain amount of money or you reach a certain amount of, you know, whatever it is. It's like Bill Gates, Elon Musk. These people didn't just like stop or Jeff Bezos, right? Yeah. The richest dude on the planet. He didn't stop. He's still trying to make Amazon, you know, it's already number one pretty much in all these categories That's and crazy. industries, but he's still trying to, you know, level it up even higher, you know, and it, it is just one of those itches that I think, uh, yeah, you just don't turn off. No, yeah. and and that's and that's. I don't know if everybody's built with that, but I I really believe they are. I think you can develop it. Yeah, I yeah. think if you're not built, I think it's inside of you, and I think, you know, because I I said I say all the time, like I had no idea what was possible. Well, some things are a wake up call, and I think that, that right. was one last thing I I wrote on here was, and we don't have to dive deep into your sobriety story, but. How did that experience and that kind of rock bottom point provide a sense of urgency for actually taking kind of life by the horns and and putting things into action? Well, when you do something that once brought you so much joy to where it started running your life to where you wanted to end your life because of it, I think that is a very, um, it's a really dark place on every level, emotional, spiritual, physical, financial, familial that like it's like you really start from the bottom rock bottom and mm-hmm. then as you move forward it's like man like i don't really know you know i don't really know if this could you know it's i don't want it to ever get worse but like when you mm-hmm. get to that point you know some people like they need a lot of pain right i do some coaching stuff and people are like, oh, I'm going to try this, we're going to do this. And then it's just like, cool, let's talk about consistency. We're going to yeah. do this every – and how many people show up the next week? One or two left. And get to the next the next week. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people struggle with consistency or – I don't. we talked about this before. It's like I don't think they're losing motivation. And like one of like Gary Vee's biggest thing, and mm-hmm. I've talked about this on podcasts because I heard him say it. He's like, if you're still here, if you come back three months to another one of my things and you're doing the same fucking thing, don't. Yeah. Like, stop coming to see me. Basically telling people to stop paying to come mm-hmm. to see him. He's like, because if you're not taking this and applying it, you're wasting yeah. your fucking time. Something I talked about with um, the last guest was, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure you probably get this in, in, in some capacity too, is a lot of people want to DM or ask, you know, hey, could you walk me through how to start this business? And Bro. they want this advice. Ugh. But at the end of the day, it means fuck all unless you actually apply it, right? You can watch all the YouTube videos, all the, you can listen to all the entrepreneurial podcasts. You, you can listen to this podcast, but unless you apply anything to actually take you know, steps forward in your life or for your business or actually take you know, the side job to actually get out of your 9 to 5, you can complain about it and say it's difficult all you want. Of course it's difficult. Yeah. But like, you can't have growth without growing pains, you know? And, and, and I, so many, it, it's crazy. I'm, I'm here to answer any questions. People want to reach out, but it's like when it, when it's a question that's so, it's like over the top invasive. Yeah. Like, Hey, send me this. I'm like, you know what? No, <laughs> like there's the internet machine. Yeah. Go use it. It's exactly we didn't, mm. you know, it's like, if you have a question about like, you know, like I have a question about, you know, like. What's the, you know, going rate if you add people to the kitchen side of things? Like, what does that mm-hmm. look like? You know, how do you how do you promote someone wanting to stay there without wanting to leave? It's mm-hmm. like, you know, finding good, you know, like that kind of thing. But, like, when people are like, hey, do you do this with your packaging? And if so, what company did you use? Oh, could you pass me along? Well, and you know what? It's always the people that either don't follow you, haven't supported you, don't know you personally, no. haven't taken steps to actually get to my, know you. Oh, my God. My, <laughs> I always like, it's funny, like. Anytime I do a podcast or I talk about this, my wife's like, make sure. It's like, I don't want it to sound like I have a chip on my shoulder, but it's like when people that are just rude, yeah, impatient, unsupportive, and then they start their own thing, and then your best friend, I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. I said, now, now it's like you walk into, you know, it's like today, you walk into the gym. Mm. Say hi to everybody. Mm-hmm. But, like, I've definitely been in places where you're like, hey, good morning. They're like, uh-huh. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, so you suck. Yeah. Got that's it. That's how it is, yeah. And then now that you own a business, oh, my God, will you come by, blah, blah, blah. I'm yeah. like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I will still come by to support you because I think it's important what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But, like, almost, like, sometimes, like, we say, <laughs> sorry, I curse, but it's like, get fucked. Yeah. No, seriously, yeah. You know, like, that, like. Now, because you need something, like, mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest difference with a lot of places, right? Like, 
even with it is like I want to share a delicious snack bar. Yep. You know, but like I'm the worst salesman because if someone told me no, I'm not beating their door down. Hey, thank you for the opportunity. You want the best for them. I yeah. I, if it's not a good fit, I totally understand. Thank you for your time and even considering it. And a lot of the times those circle back. May take years, may take you know, months, years, whatever. Mm-hmm. But like I've had people reach out and be like, hey, are you still doing that Fro Pro thing? Yeah. Oh, hey, y- you should talk to this guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks for thinking of me. I appreciate that. Like I've never been like, hey, f- fuck you yeah. for not doing what I want you to do mm-hmm. and buying my product or carrying it in your gym. Yeah. I'm like, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Or thank you for even having a conversation. Mm-hmm. Cause I learned, you know, it's like, it's not a fit for everybody and yeah. that's okay. It's like what they say, if you want to please people, you know, uh, if you want to please everybody all the time, you know, scoop ice cream. Yeah. Because most people are happy when they get ice cream. Yeah. They're not really disappointed. It's a, it's a good business, right? Good oh, business and that's, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, and you talk about those things. It's like, you know, there's other things I'm like, my wife, you know, has interest in, I, I have interest yeah. in, but like, we love what we do. We mm-hmm. we love being in in it, mm-hmm. you know. And we're fortunate now. We have really good people that we can work on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think a lot of you know that comes down to the thing we were talking about before. It's like tough to go out and work on it, right? Yeah. You know, am I gonna get you know an account with V twenty three? I don't know. Who knows? I yeah. was just happy with the experience. Next mm-hmm. time I come here. I'm probably going to go work out there and drop in Regardless. and pay just to say well, hello. It's, it's paying it forward, and, you know, it's taking care of good people and good business without, like I said, the expectation earlier. And, yeah. you know, and how you presented yourself today and made a connection, and it was more than just, hello, go work out and leave. Right. You know, creating a relationship, creating, you know, having some good conversations, they'll remember that too. And so when they get those bars, they're going to remember, oh, Matt. Yeah, he was awesome when he came through and worked out. You know, we should give his bars a try, you know. And it's not the expectation of, well, they better order from me. I'm never going again. But, again, I think you associate with good people. You have good vibes, good conversations with people. Things just happen organically. It it doesn't have to be forced. It doesn't have to be, you know, one-to-one ratio as far as give and take, you know. Yeah, human connection is everything. And I think, you know, I think we... I think we forget about that. I think things become very impersonal with social media, even though it's a great tool to grow a business. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, face to face, handwritten notes, the go the old like a long old way. old school way of doing things, you know, like I grew up writing thank you notes because that's the way my mom made me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, like it was like I used to answer the phone like, Thank you for calling the Williams household. Yep. This is Matt speaking. Because like they grew up that they, they were old school. They yep. were like you know, back in the day, this is how we talk to people. Yeah. And I think, you know, I drop some language sometimes and like, I don't even think about it, but like, I have to, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, man, I, I kind of curse a little bit too much today. What was that about? Like, yeah. it's not out of malicious, you know, it's just maliciousness, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just, I get, sometimes I just get so fired up, like things just start, <laughs> start happening and yeah. like, I get, you know, like amped and there's no reason for it. But, yeah. you know, I think, I think the human connection is everything. I think, you know, supporting people, um, as best you can with the energy you have, um, in the right way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, like I, I, it was told to me again, like a lot of the stuff that I'm saying was, re- was, was handed down. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, we're in the effort business. If I can get through a day and I put forth the best effort into the relationships and the connections and the workouts and whatever I get to do, if I say, man, I gave it all am I all and like, you know, ask for forgiveness for like, you know, if I, you know, messed up somewhere mm-hmm. or hurt somebody's feelings and like own that mm-hmm. um, and repair whatever, you know, and, and I don't have many of those days, but there's days where like, you know, I'm, I'm off a little bit, but yeah. you know, and then I'm doing the best. Uh, th- th- then that's all I can do. Yeah. Take you responsibility, know? move forward. Yeah. And I'm not, everybody's going to like me, you know, and like before that used to bother me, but that's okay today. And I don't know if it's cause I'm old, you know, like <laughs> I, I'm, I'm shocked dude. And I don't, I, you know, I don't want it to be demeaning or weird, but like I was not anywhere fucking close to doing what you're doing at your age. Mm-hmm. Like I was lost. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really remarkable when someone young is so driven and focused and doing the things that they love just because, you know, like you shared about the cool thing your wife is doing with mm-hmm. books. Like that's great. If mm-hmm. you love it and you, and it's something that you truly enjoy, eventually the money will come. And, yeah. and that sounds hokey, but it's true. It's like, you can turn anything that you love to do into something more if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. You know, like I had no clue when I started FroPro and making little peanut butter snack bars and easy bake snack trays mm-hmm. 
that it was going to be to where it is today and what I really envision it to be in the next five to ten years. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. And Absolutely. And, of course, tell people where can they find you and where can they find FroPro. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, new handle on Instagram is FroPro Snacks. So at FroPro Snacks, you can find me at M-W-A-R Williams. That's M-W-A-R Williams, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Um, at Wake Up The Sun on Instagram as well for my podcast. Um, they can and, find the bars, obviously, online. Is it yes. FroProSnacks.com? Yeah. So you can go to www.FroPro.com. FroPro.com. Yeah, easiest and then, thing. What, I guess, what areas, if they are listening to and they are local to Florida, like what what stores might have it? Anywhere in Florida, pretty much uh, any anywhere there's a Whole Foods, you can find us. Uh, gyms, juice bars. If you go on our website, literally store location. any yeah. store location, any gym, coffee house, office, juice bar, smoothie place, uh, grocery store. Strip club. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, that's probably a good idea. Um, anywhere you can yeah. find us on the website. Please, if you have any questions reach out you're going to deal with me myself matthew williams or my wife chelsea williams um and yeah we love feedback we love suggestions we're open to pretty much anything if you're in florida and you want to get a good workout too we have a gym attached and uh we have uh we have a lot of fun jumping in and out of the 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 ice barrel as well so yeah we'd love to hear from you and uh, yeah brock thanks so much for having me on this is such a cool day yeah we'll catch you guys later that's it